Hello everyone, hoping that all of you are in good health. This time we'll be continuing the part 1 on how to breed Leopard Daniel and now we'll read in part 2. And if you didn't watch our part 1, just click the link above. And also I don't want to show my face because there's something bad happened and I'm so depressed right now. But I still want to continue on giving advices, especially to the beginners because I'm glad that even in small ways, I can share it with you guys. Hope you understand. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. One of the most popular and commonly available Daniels, the Leopard Daniel, has been a long time staple in the freshwater hobby, but it has a unusual background. It was first described as Bracky Daniel Franke by Mien Ken in 1963. The name was later changed to Daniel Franke, but the actual origin of this fish is simply unknown. Some claim that it came from India or Thailand. But no type locality was ever known. Other say that the Leopard Daniel is mutant strain developed in Czechoslovakia from the Zebra Daniel, while still others speculate that this is a mutant strain of the Dwarf Daniel or Spotted Daniel. Of course, new strain came from crossbreeding method, and so I'm planning to do a crossbreeding project with this Daniel, and I'm really excited about it because that's what we do: exploring on possible outcome on breeding our beloved fish. So make sure to watch for it. These attractive little fish are hardy and prolific breeders, so they are a great choice for the beginning aquarist. They do well in most community tanks and are a great addition to any collection of Daniels. Their behavior is pretty typical for Daniels, friendly enough but active and fast moving. This schooling fish should be kept in a group of at least 3, ideally 10. A skull of Daniels can be housed with the most of any community fish as long as the Daniels will not be eaten and the other fish are not startled by swift movement. So as what we do in our previous video on breeding, we need to make sure to separate the male and female for conditioning for 7 to 10 days by feeding them live foods to make the female produce more eggs and melt or sperm for males and in order to trigger their breeding response. So last time we feed them with a dapnyas, but now I'm going to feed them with dried brine shrimp. A school of this small lively fish is well sorted to a smaller aquarium, and a 10 gallon tank is the smallest needed to house a school, but 20 gallons is optimal. Their aquarium needs care and feeding are the same as their parentage. Like all Zebra Daniels varieties, they can withstand an impressive range of water temperatures and conditions and will generally do just fine without a water heater. They can be comfortable in temperatures down to the low 60s Fahrenheit, but even though they are not finicky about water conditions, it is best to not to keep your aquarium at any extreme. To create an attractive effect in your aquarium, try a mix cool by combining the pretty leopard daniel with some regular zebra fish. A mix like this will provide a nice contrast of swift moving, darting color. Mixing even more varieties like the golden zebra daniel, albino zebra daniel and blue and green daniel works equally well and creates a really ex exciting effect. And don't be surprised if the schools spend a lot of time in the water flow of the filters or pumps as they are reminiscent of the swift moving waters found in the natural habitat or their natural environment. So as what we always do when breeding, we need to prepare the breeding tank of course and the breeding net and during afternoon by 4 p.m. we place all the breeders together and by dawn starting 4 a.m. they will start to breed and of course their eggs will just fall at the bottom. And here we need to change the net because it has a hole on it. <laughs> Male leopard daniels are generally more torpedo shaped, while females tend to have a larger belly. Generally, male leopard daniels spawn with and remain loyal to one female. A breeding pair will spawn roughly 300 to 400 eggs and hatch within 3 days. And on the next morning at 8 a.m., we need to check our breeders here if they have spawned. And we need to transfer the breeders on their original time for another conditioning as continuous breeding. Mm -hmm. 
And here, as what you can see, our breeding is successful and there are hundreds of eggs at the bottom. Have you seen those small clear round eggs? It means those eggs were fertilized. And the eggs with the white color were unfertilized. So start from here, we need to add few drops of methylene blue to discourage the fungus bloom. And after 3 days, here are a little cute leopard danios fry and there's so many of them. In this stage, you can feed them with infosoria or BBS, even egg yolk and microworms. Anyway, gladly they are not a picky eater so you can feed them with any powder fish food and they will be fine. And here, let's transfer our blue dream neocaridina to their new planted tank. Actually, I like to keep shrimps on my planting tank because shrimps and fish have that symbiotic relationship. They're living together mutually and have that beneficial relationship. Because for example, the an eaten fish food will cause harm to the fish, but shrimps will eat those things and make your tank clean from algae attack. While the neocaridina shrimp mostly originate from Southeast Asia, living in streams on ponds, usually with plenty of plants and often with wood and rocks as natural substrate. And many species in the Havi, however, have been captive and bred, and in some cases, the original wild species is debated. Most species of Neocardina do best in medium to hard water, with a pH of 6.5 to 8, where water is soft. However, calcium supplements may be needed to help the shrimp during molting when calcium is needed to help make new skins. As to temperature, most will tolerate as low as 18 degrees Celsius to 64 Fahrenheit. They will tolerate even lower for short periods, making them quite easy to ship. And accept as high as 28 degrees Celsius or 82 Fahrenheit. However, I find they live longest and breed best between 21 to 26 degrees Celsius or 70 to 79 Fahrenheit. At higher temperatures growth and breeding might be faster, but their lifespan are considerably shorter due to the increase in their metabolic rate caused by those temperatures. In warmer water, you may also need to add additional agitation or aeration to compensate for the lower amounts of dissolved oxygen. No special steps are needed to get Neocaridina to breed. If you can keep them alive and healthy, they will breed for sure. Neocaridina dwarf shrimps usually spawn shortly after molting, the female releasing pheromones into the water to indicate her readiness and exciting the males. A good sign with most species of Neocaridina that the female is approaching readiness is seeing a colored area form about shoulder height. This comprises the immature eggs visible to the shrimp and usually called a saddle by shrimp keepers. And if you'd like to know more how to breed or keep this cute little fella, just comment down below so that we can make another separate video for that. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully this helps you to breed your Leopard Daniel successfully. Just make sure to follow our guide here. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to get updated on upcoming videos like this one. And if you have any questions, clarifications regarding to our video, just send your message at the comment section below. 
or follow us on our FB page at habitsv.ph and to my Instagram account at markroyce87 and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions there. Thank you very much guys. Stay safe everyone. To God be the glory. Bye-bye.